Yeah. Uh, so, uh, hello, uh, greetings from Kiev. Uh, I was invited to tell a bit about my work. Uh, so I'll show you several several works uh, which uh, were present uh, at my uh, two uh, recent solo exhibitions uh, Stone Hits Stone uh, in Pinchuk Center in Kiev and uh, Project of Ruins in uh, Mumok in Vienna. Uh, yeah, if I'll try to describe uh, what I'm doing uh, in general, it is uh, about uh, collective memory, paradoxes of collective memory, especially uh, memory of trauma. And uh, it is about uh, art history, which uh, contains like some keys to paradoxes of, uh, of political history. Like to say, uh, metaphorically, it's about uh, mass grave and about museum and uh, about uh, relations between them. I use quotes uh, very often. Like mostly I uh, make uh, certain constellations of uh, quotes from archives of political history and uh, from art history. So several works I'll show, they, uh, they combine both. Uh, I use different uh, forms and mediums, uh, so it can be sculpture, installation, or collage, or charcoal, or ink drawings. Actually, when I use this, uh, let's say, more traditional manual mediums, uh, uh, it is about uh, intonation. Oh, not uh, just quote as it is when you cut out certain fragment from uh, from the bigger situation, from very complex multi layer situation, but also it's in a way like how how you express it. Actually, what is uh, what is the role of your own voice and your own attitude here? Okay, so I'll uh, switch to showing images from my website. Yeah, uh, I hope uh, now now you see it. If no, uh, Yvette, please uh, please uh, write me. Uh, So this is a work uh, called uh, Tiger Sleep. It uh, exists in several versions. Uh, these are the copies of spares, of iron spares from uh, Gorlovka in Donbass. Uh, 
they were made uh, by uh, workers from Borlovka. Actually, they were remade from the workers' instruments during armed uprising. The history of uh, uprising in Gorlovka like relates both to general history of uh, 1905 uh, revolution in Russian Empire and to the history of workers' movement in Donbass and to the history of industrialization of Donbass in general. Like first uh, wave of uh, industrialization was related to uh, Western, to European, like factory owners who used this uh, land of Donbass full of natural resources and also the social situation with uh, plenty of uh, uh, people who were extremely poor and uh, who could be used in a way which was impossible in uh, Western or Central Europe. The situation of Donbass workers was uh, really catastrophic. The uprising in Gorlovka started when uh, workers start to demand from a Belgian factory owner called Loest. They demanded their salaries, they demanded uh, some uh, you know, better working conditions, uh, while plenty of miners died each week. And uh, lowest uh, he called uh, Cossacks who were like a riot police in the Russian Empire and uh, first peaceful manifestation of workers was violently attacked and then uh, workers made these spares from their instruments. The title of the work is Tiger Sleep. It's a well-known quote from a uh, uh, like famous text of Walter Benjamin uh, Benjamin uh, about uh, philosophy of history. And uh, he writes about uh, this uh, tiger sleep to the past about uh, the way we use our knowledge about the past to find an energy for new revolutionary transformation. But when certain aspects of past are erased from official historiography and uh, from the dominant ways to narrate and narrate the past and to write the history. They become uh, like uh, problematic as a place. You know, you just make your like leap, you jump into the darkness. You don't know what, uh, what really was there during so-called politics of decommunization in Ukraine. The history of uh, worker struggle was almost erased. Better to say it was abandoned, neglected. It became extremely unpopular. Not officially forbidden but, uh, you know, when you start to speak about this, 
you immediately uh, feel yourself uh, very uncomfortable in a current uh, like intellectual environment of the country. Actually, these are not the things to to talk about because they don't uh, relate to the questions of national identity, national struggle, struggle for national independence. Like they just fall out from the nationally oriented historical discourse. They are something different. And when we try to get energy from trans for transformation from there, we step into darkness. I found uh, the original spares in National Museum of uh, History of Ukraine in Kyiv. I found them uh, making my work at uh, the School of Kyiv Biennale, but I found them in the depths of museum storage. They were not planned to exhibit in any visible future. They were like bastards of this museum collection. They were really like unwanted children of museum, unwanted part of history. And uh, this is the main reason why I took them. I tried to adopt them inside of my own way to narrate the past, maybe inside of my like schizophrenic way like uh, the way which uh, is out of uh, say current uh, political convention. So this was a tiger sleep. Other work is called uh, Victory, Victory White Shelf. This sculpture has a structure of collage. The white geometric shape is the reconstruction of an unrealized monument by Ukrainian avant-garde artist Vasily Yermilov. In 1920s, he proposed to uh, create a monument to three Russian revolutions, like a uh, so-called Decembrist uprising from 19th century the revolution of uh, 1905. Actually, its part was the uh, World of Cup Rising and the uh, Great October Revolution. Like in today's uh, Ukrainian official histor historiography, uh, the last is uh, called uh, October Coup, not a revolution. Uh, so, it was a constructivist monument, like proposed for public competition, but uh, never erected in uh, any any place. Other part are the cups, ceramic cups in melted glass which I found on the ruins of the house in Lysychansk, in Donbass, like after some houses were destroyed by a uh, shelling. Today, Lysychansk is a battlefield again two uh, cities which uh, stand very close, Lysychansk and Severodonetsk are partly occupied by Russian forces 
and uh, partly destroyed as cities Mariupol or Papasna were destroyed before. So the white geometric shape referring to revolution, yes, and material evidence related to the current war, which goes on for eight years already, and which led to mass devastation of lots of cities and villages in, uh, in Ukraine. Yeah, so maybe before I'll show you one more work because uh, I have to to finish. I will try to describe some some aspects of uh, of my methods on example of uh, of the victory. So I take. Uh, the item from uh, from today's reality, like the material evidence, and uh, I oppose it to art history, which has strong utopian dimension. We can use this word utopia, which uh, was used to neutralize radical and revolutionary projects so often, but uh, which still has emancipatory potential. potential. Utopia is still present in art history. But today's war and today's politics is uh, non utopia, even anti utopian. There are no perfect geometric shapes which are like uh, sketches or uh, projects of uh, future like equal and happy coexistence of human and maybe non-human beings. Today's war is non-utopian. It's not about any project of future. It's about survival in present day. And uh, it's about uh, an effort to reconstruct an empire producing a like a bloody fascist fake. So it's not even about a past. It's about fake of the past. This war is non-historical, even anti-historical. So, in the end, I'll show one more work. the Red Mountains. It's 
It is an installation which I realized in 2019 and uh, which uh, consists of three reconstructions of concrete pedestals. That are pedestals of three monuments created by other Ukrainian avant-garde artist Ivan Kavaleridze in 1920s as well. Monument to Bolshevik leader of Donbass, whose name was Artyom or Fyodor Sergeyev. Monument in Bakhmut, which was uh, destroyed by Germans during, uh, during Nazi occupation in uh, 1942. Pedestal of other monument to Artyom, which is still in Donbass, in a place called Sviatoyirsk, which uh, turned to a battlefield again. This monument still exists, but even in 2017, Ukrainian Vice Prime Minister demanded to destroy it, because it's like, as he said, a monument to Bolshevik terrorist and separatist. And third, it was a monument to Taras Shevchenko, like a key figure of Ukrainian literature of uh, 19th century and uh, maybe the most important figure for this national uh, discourse uh, you know, he's called like a national prophet. Uh, monument to Taras Shevchenko exists as well. There were two attempts to destroy it in 20th century during German occupation and uh, like next one during Stalinism because of it, because of the formal reasons, because it was this geometric avant-garde sculpture. So three shapes, three monuments, and three histories and uh, like traveling in a labyrinth of paradoxes which the story create. Like I try to face the zones of historical darkness. Face situations which are not about this possible conventions of history writing and of like building our presence on some you know convention about the past i'm not so much interested in uh, this zone of strong light it's like traveling in uh, in search of darkness today we are in situation of new darkness and new unpredictability. So it's highly potential situation. I think we'll have a, a lot to speak about relating to current period uh, if we'll survive. Thank you.